Hi, Andrew here. Let's do some more gel testing today. Today we're going to take a look at Hornady's 75 grain boat tail hollow point. But this is a hand load and the bullet that Hornady sells for reloading components isn't the same exactly, precisely, as the bullet that they use for their 75 grain tap load. Now it's commonly said that the reloading component bullet isn't actually quite as terminally effective as the tap load. So I want to put that to the test. We're going to shoot it over 24.0 grains of ramshot tack, which is a near book max load. So obviously if you are reloading, work up to this. Of course, it's near book max for 223 pressures. It's just a little over starting for 556 pressure loads. Nevertheless, never take something that you hear from some jackass on the internet <laughs> and apply it to your own hand loading, always work up carefully. We're going to fire it out of a 10 and a half inch, one and seven twist AR-15. All right, so that is really impressive. Big, huge temporary stretch cavity, monster fragmentation, absolutely devastating insofar as a small arms cartridge can be. The only thing that comes even a little short is that it has a bit of a neck to it, but frankly, the neck isn't that long. It's short enough that we would probably start seeing disruption right after the ribs in a frontal torso shot. The core retained enough weight to get deep enough to damage vital organs if you had to fire through an arm at an angle or obliquely or from the supine position or in any of these other less than ideal conditions that happen in an actual gunfight and that necessitate the FBI recommended 12 inch minimum. Overall, absolutely excellent performance and I would highly recommend this bullet for use in defensive purposes for just about anyone. Now as I mentioned in a previous video, bullets like this are not barrier blind. So if barrier blindness is a priority for you, then maybe this isn't a good choice. This bullet will not perform as well after passing through auto glass or sheet metal or plywood. On the other hand, that may actually make it a better choice for home defense purposes. A lot of people look for loads that don't penetrate deeply for home defense. I think that that's a foolish choice. I think that you should always choose defensive ammunition that meets FBI recommendations. Still, a bullet that is a little less lethal after passing through lots of other structures, maybe not a terrible choice for home defense. Unless you plan on having to shoot through auto glass in your living room, barrier performance may not be as important to you. But of course, defensive situations can develop in unpredictable ways, and you may need to shoot through wallboard, plywood, or even auto glass if the fight moved out into the street. All these concerns are something that you have to think of for your situation personally. But don't take any of this to to mean that a bullet that's not barrier blind is not lethal on the other side of one or two or five walls for that matter. Any bullet that's capable of penetrating a bad guy deeply enough to incapacitate will also penetrate multiple interior walls and have the potential to kill on the other side of those walls. If you disagree with anything I've said, if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment below. If you'd like to learn more about how projectile wounding works and why we make the choices we do, please take a look at the best choices for self-defense ammunition article that'll be linked in the description underneath this video. 
As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I know I nag you about that a lot, but growing this channel helps us continue to bring you good content like this. So if you want to see more of it, definitely subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can get notified every time we post a video. Have a great day.